Welcome to Discovery Tour by Assassin's Creed Ancient Egypt. Welcome to Alexandria. Alexander's plan to build his great city began with a verse from... Though Alexander considered this location ideal for his... The... Excavations led by Mahmoud Bey al Falaki in the 19th century. These formidable ancient walls would resist a number of attacks, including fending off the king of Syria in 169 BCE. It wasn't until 295 CE that they eventually fell to Roman Emperor Diocletian, and this only after eight months of relentless assault. Alexandria's principal architect, Dinocrates, chose a Hippodamian grid plan. The grid maximized functionality. A central corridor ran. Alexandria was most likely built upon an already existing Egyptian village. Upon its completion, the Egyptians reviled the city, refusing to call it by its founder's name. Instead, they called it Raqqed, the building as a mark of disdain, which was later Hellenized into Rakotis. Despite this, the name Alexandria would remain. Welcome to Osiris, the first mummy. The oldest mummies recovered date ideologic. It is Plutarch who gives the most. The ritual used to bring Osiris back to life essentially depicts how he became the first mummy. It is why, on the Sarcophagi of Kings, we often find Iset and Nephthys represented as the magicians who restore life to the deceased.
Welcome to the mummification process used by ancient Egyptians was highly ceremonial in the pure after taking care of the canopic jar towards the middle of the new king embalmers used natron as a desiccant to dry the flesh in addition, masks were an important part of a mummy's cartonage evolved. Cartonage envelopes were usually covered with inscription. Once the the last stage of this long ritual was the act of touching the mouth with the ads to symbolically allow the breath of life to infuse an inert body. Its performance was reserved for a very specific set of people, priests who wore the mask of the god Anubis, a close relative of the family, or by the heir to the throne. Welcome to The Importance of Mummies. The first hieroglyph... The mummification techniques were jealously guarded by embalmers... The Uabet... The least costly. Egyptian civilization has always appealed to what? The Egyptomy. By 1868, mass tourism began in Egypt. Thanks to those dubious parties, the fantasy of a mummy coming back to life, seeking revenge on its defilers, was born. The mummy malediction myth has remained steady in popular culture ever since, particularly in written media and cinema. Welcome to Amulets and Rit Ancient Egyptians Believe Pre this would infuse amulets. Religion was so important. There was a complete calendar of each of the religious days, both good and bad, illustrating the appropriate daily rituals along with why deemed messen it was oracles that guided the greek sailor batos to the coast of libya where he founded a colony known as cyrene during alexander the great's campaign to conquer persia he consulted the oracle at the temple of amun within the oasis of siwa and was subsequently ordained a divine being
welcome. ...to temples and... During rituals and festivals, the god was... Ancient Egyptians believed that Ra, the sun god, traveled the sky... The god Ra believed mankind was conspired. Unlike the daily rituals that took place, the importance of these festivals is demonstrated by their law. The temple hierarchy. Scribes were custodians of the sacred sciences. Priests and all the... The naos was where the god statue stood. The representation of the deity was usually in stone or wood and decorated with gold, silver, and precious stones. Smaller temples had only one naos, while larger complexes such as the Temple of Karnak had many chambers to honor gods, such as Amun, Ta, and Osiris. Each statue was believed to be a receptacle for the presence or essence of the god's Ka enabling it to take a physical form. Through the statue, the god came to the shrine to eat, drink, and communicate with the pharaoh, or with the priests standing in for the pharaoh. Welcome to Temples and Priests. From its foundation, the city of... Temples were the center of religious, political, and economic life in ancient Egypt. Located in the center of Memphis, the Temple of Ta was the most prominent and imposing building in the city. The long walkway leading toward the temple, known as... The dromos opened into a courtyard, with a surrounding portico graced with columns carved to resemble palm trees. During spe the, me the size of the imposing sculpture reflects the importance it had to the temple. In Egyptian culture, some animals were associated with gods, while others were considered to be living gods. Originally the symbol of fertility, like other living divinities, the mortal incarnation of the Apis bull was prayed to, and when it died, it was given a luxury. Ancient Egyptians believed details of this. The high priest, the god was then washed with in Heredity. Hi. In the 21st. The educational institution in ancient. Not limited to instruction for young students, the House of Life was a source of reference for many scholars, with rooms dedicated to papyri of many disciplines. Ancient Egyptian economy was. There are records of palaces, warehouses, and granaries were built inside the temple compound to better control the redistribution of goods. The size of the recorded numbers of goods, combined with every other function filled by temples, only serves to confirm their might as economic, religious, and political centers of power within Egypt.
Welcome to Building Ancient Egypt. Constructed with bricks made of... Limestone was common and... Ancient Egyptians... Workers would draw a large grid directly on the stone surface. To cut this... To maintain the stability of these mining pits over the course of quarry... In every quarry, Dedicated shrines were established to offer protection for the workers. In particular, Circuit, the scorpion goddess, was considered a very powerful deity among quarry workers. Every mine and quarry of ancient Egypt included a scorpion charmer who was said to use magical powers to ward off the dangerous insects and keep the workers safe. Welcome to Workers and Transport. Whether workers were employed for the pyramid construction, skilled, while some quarries were closed, whenever possible, during the Iwadi, stone cargo generally weighed 15 tons per River transportation was the most efficient way to ferry stone blocks between the quarry and the construction site. Blocks were transported by flotillas of several types of boats. The most detailed illustration of transport by river is a relief of Queen Hatshepsut's barge with an accompanying flotilla. Welcome to Agriculture and Seasons. While crops were cultivated in different oases around the desert, most of the arable lands were near the... The Ptolemaic era created an agricultural revolution with the introduction of advanced agricultural techniques and new grain types such as rice, durum wheat, and pearl millet. The resulting agricultural mass production great. Both bread and beer rations were part of a system of barter payment. The state used those goods to pay wages for those who worked in the quarries and at the construction sites. Beer was so important to ancient Egyptians. In order to increase agricultural production, Fertile land was divided into plots, and large agricultural villages were encouraged. The state and temples were the biggest landowners. Depending on the region, fertile land was managed by... The three seasons known as Akhet, Heret, and Shemu corresponded to a specific phase of the agricultural process and the river's natural changes. Akhet was the time of the flood beginning with the appearance of the star Sirius in July. Heret was the time when lands were cultivated, plowed, and sown. 
The Pharaoh's duty was to uphold order against chaos and provide for his people. Priests and local governors also wanted to appear as protectors of the people. However, any variation in the Nile's seasons could cause water shortages. The story begins with the Pharaoh worried for his people. The Nile hasn't flooded in years, and his people are starving. In search of the origins of the flooding, Djoser seeks out Kanum, the protector god of the region and the source of the drought. Djoser gives the god offerings and orders his priests to restore the temple of Kanum. These offerings please the god and the floods are restored. This story was intended to highlight the importance of the deity in everyone's daily lives, while also demonstrating the crucial role that the priests and the king played in feeding and protecting the people of Egypt. to ancient Egyptian culture. The new grain types of the Ptolemaic period, later Asakia or water. The threshing process separated the grain from its husk. Winnowing was the state. Transporting large amounts of grain required ship. Having reached Alexandria's inner harbor, the wheat was unloaded under the supervision of a civil... Grain storage facilities were located across all of Egypt. Temples and institutes. The sieves used by ancient Egyptians were unable to filter out sand and stones. Grit often passed into the flour causing long-term tooth abrasions among all classes of Egyptians. Welcome to Domesticated Animals of Ancient Egypt. Agriculture and Domesticated Livestock were introduced 6,000 years ago. Archaeologists have found traces of cattle, donkeys, pigs, and dog. Pets were deeply cherished in ancient Egypt. Many illustrations of children often include a pet in the depiction. One of ancient Egypt's most iconic animals, the cat, wasn't adopted into their daily life until the Middle Kingdom. Since they were so highly capable of killing snakes and The earliest reference to dogs dates back to 5000 BCE. They were popular pets as they helped hunters and protected herds. They were closely linked to Anubis, the jackal-headed god. Baboons, monkeys, and even falcons were tamed as pets. Each was mummified and buried with as much ceremony as any family member. Welcome to Evidence of advanced medical procedures have been and found on mummies and another similar document. Remedies were considered as medicine and carried by doctors and priests. Village doctors often had another job alongside their medical duties and the preparation of medicines. 
A cure for blindness was made of fermented honey, ochre, and coal. The science behind it was that honey functioned as an antiseptic and antibacterial, while ochre would reduce the swelling. All of their knowledge did not always suffice. Ramses II died of an infection caused by an abscessed tooth. Welcome to Leather and Linen in Ancient Egypt. Tanning, a process which dates from prehistoric times, was present although not highly valued in Egypt due to the heat. Leather was reserved, valued for its coolness and freshness in hot weather. Linen was the fiber most commonly used for fabrics and textiles. It was produced from flax, which was plentiful in Egypt. Various shades were achieved using woad, a dye produced from the leaves. This area's style is strongly influenced by the dye baths and tanneries of modern-day Fes in Morocco. This helped Ubisoft envision what such locations might have been like in ancient Egypt. While this tannery is within the city walls, back then they were often found outside the city boundaries. The tanner's trade was considered off-putting by the Greeks, as all these operations resulted in noxious smells. Welcome to Ancient Egyptian Fashions. Learning what life was like for ancient Egyptians. Though ideal, the fabric of ancient Egyptian clothing, cosmetics including Egyptians believed coal had magical powers, wearing it as black eyeliner to protect their eyes from... Women and teenage girls wore their hair... Wigs... Prepubescent children generally had their heads shaved. Young girls kept some strands intact, while young boys had a braid worn on the side. It was under the watchful eye of Ta of Memphis. Art. In ancient Egyptian culture, drawing was used as illustration, such as seen in the Book of the Dead. It was also the first step in the creation of a relief, painting, or statue. Two-dimensional representations were concerned with order and form and were in stylistically Egyptians were concerned with the depiction of the human form an exception to this were scenes to reliefs could be statues were believed to be vessels for the soul in ancient e at the domestic level most Egyptians were craftspeople to Located near the Valley of the Kings, archaeologists believe the site was home to skilled and respected artisans for over 400 years. It is considered one of the most important discoveries relating to Egyptian daily life. While much of the focus of Egyptian archaeology was on its kings and queens, it wasn't until the excavation of Deir al-Medina 
that Egyptologists were given a valuable window into the community life of ancient Egyptian artisans. Art Welcome to Ev excavations all over Egypt. Have an early. The potter's wheel was utilized. Quartzite part. Potsherds could be found anywhere and were the most common canvas for writing or drawing in comparison to the more expensive papyrus sheets. Named after their Greek description. Ostraca contained daily life records, letters, or could be drawn upon. Artists drew sketches for temples and tombs, or simply for leisure. Welcome to the Egyptian household. In pre-Greco-Roman culture, certain professions were open only to women, such as weaving or professional. Homes were generally composed of three. Marriages were a social contract rather than a religious construct. Family was vitally important. Status and wealth played a large Town officials and the rich lived in mansions with numerous rooms that were luxuriously decorated. Funeral stone inscriptions focused on the main member of a household. Encircling this person would then be a spouse, parents, and children, possibly even siblings. These stones were so structured because there were no surnames in ancient Egyptian culture. Parents and children were a sort of family tree, which allowed for the identification of the deceased. Welcome to Bread and Beef. While the Mesopotamians invented beer, including beer was once baked, bread would be crumbled into the once ready, the bread and grain mixture would. Food was prepared. Ancient Egyptians always had to fight off the omnipresent sand particles that were blown towards them. Despite their best efforts, sand regularly made its way into their food. Additionally, particles from the grain grinding stone tools and ovens they used also contributed to attrition and prematurely worn teeth. The team tried to portray this through toothache animations and commoners sweeping sand off. Wine in ancient Egypt. When the a millennia old tradition, grape cultivation and wine production was regimented. Documentation shows that only certain craftsfolk 
Egyptians had different kinds of wines, most of which ranged in quality from good to very good. The sweet shade, to which honey had been added. The soft nejem, obtained by drying the grapes in the sun. The ma, reserved for religious ceremonies. And finally, there was the peor, the mediocre rated wine, resulting from the second pressing of grapes and reserved for a less discerning palate. Welcome to Oil in Ancient Egypt. Castor, sesame, and moringa were the source of the most common oils in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egyptians originally used castor oil in wick lamps, but also for cosmetics, such as facial and hair treatments. There is mention in some papyrus of castor oil. Olive trees were present, though scarce, in ancient Egypt's early history. And olives were mostly imported from Syria and Palestine. Their use and cultivation remained uncommon until the mass arrival of Greek settlers during the reign of the Ptolemies, when demand increased sharply. Olive trees were normally found in the region of the Fayum and the lands surrounding Alexandria. Thank <laughs> you. 